This is a knackered transfer box. Let's take it apart and have a look at the carnage. So, if you watched my earlier video, you would have watched me swap out this transfer box out of my Discovery One, because it's basically locked in diff lock all the time. Swapped it out, got it on here, but you'll see the drain plug when I pulled it out was absolutely covered in filings, and even when the oil was draining out, it was just trickling out rather than flowing out because there's just that much junk in here. So I thought it'd be fun to take this apart and have a look and see what actually failed. So I'm gonna start by taking these inspection plates off and see what we find. All right, here we go. Amazing really to think that this LT230 gearbox uh, or transfer case had been made for 32 years. Starting uh, 1983 they started it and it ran all the way up to 2004. For sure, um, you know, it had various internal changes and updates, but the, the de sort of design and the form factor never changed. All right, now we've got this plate off, we can see immediately flakes of uh, metal everywhere. Although well, there's a hole, that seems pretty intact. You can see these teeth have had uh, bits taken out of them. That is not, not in good condition there. Like that, like that. And even here. Okay, I guess the damage is uh, in this section here, so probably the next thing to do is take these off and take the end off. Let's see what we got. Just in case there's any more uh, proof needed of the integrity of this box, I literally can't even move it by hand half the time, it's so stuck. Anyway, whilst we're here, we might as well have a look uh, inside. You can see here is where the back of the gearbox joins the transfer case. Drive is then sent through these two cogs and then ultimately that goes to high and low gear ratios across here and this shaft has a selector ring which can be uh, pushed up and down to select the ratio that you want. Anyway, back to stripping more bits off. This is the back of the case, so this is where the drive shaft would come out to the back differential. Okay. You can see where the speedo uh, cable gets turned there. Alright, basically if you like doing a proper job then uh, look away now because I had to grind all these nuts off because I keep stripping all the 10mm ones. Think. I need to get some better tools and I am a bad workman so I'm qualified to say that. Anyway, with this, I uh, got this bit off the back here that goes to the front um, differential drive shaft and that actually reveals that centre diff for the first time we can actually get a good look at it. To get these bearings off you, you pretty much have to uh, just destroy the bearing. I guess it's a tool you can get that, that gets right underneath but uh, unfortunately these ones were sacrificial. Alright, time's going to uh, montage the mode as we take uh, some more of this apart. Okay, now we've got the centre diff out, you can see the uh, high-low selector ring working back and forth like so. Alright, as we crack open the centre diff, this is clearly where all the problems have begun for this transfer case. 
can see that little bit of tooth that I've pulled out is actually one of the pins that goes across. Uh, there's two pins that go across each other, and one of them's just completely failed, and then rattled around all the side of there, and uh, smashed the uh, the teeth off the cogs and all sorts. It was in a right mess. Okay, so that's what the pin's supposed to look like, and uh, this is what's left of the old one, which used to be exactly the same, like the same length and everything. So it's just mashed. All right, so uh, now we've worked out what's happened to this uh, transfer case. I think the obvious thing to do is clean up all the pieces and then make a montage of laying them out. <laughs> 